So this kid is Saru, and Saru is completely lost, and he wants nothing more than to see his mother again. Now Saru is five, and he lives with his mom and his other siblings in a one-room hut in Kandua, India. Now his mom, who we'll just call mom, she tries her best, but she's a single mother and they are very poor. So one night, Saru goes with his older brother to one of the local train stations, and there they're gonna scavenge for food scraps and loose change. But by the time they get there, Saru is worn out. He's tired, so older brother, who we'll just call older brother. Older brother is like, okay, well, just lay on this bench. Take a nap for a minute. I'm gonna go dig for scraps and I'll be back. So Saru lays down and pretty quickly he falls asleep. And while he's asleep, older brother, he's out around the tracks, I guess, where no one is around. And then suddenly, boom, he gets hit by a train and obviously he doesn't survive. Meanwhile, Saru is still there asleep on the bench. And sometime later, Saru wakes up and older brother hasn't come back for him. So Saru looks around, he calls out for him, but he can't find him. Then he sees a train stopped on the platform and he runs inside thinking older brother might be in there. He's running down the aisles, he's calling out older brother's name, he's asking people for help finding him, but it's no use. And Saru eventually sits down thinking, okay, maybe older brother will come back for him. And that's when he nods off again. And while he's asleep, the train starts moving. And by the time he wakes up, 14 hours had gone by. And the train ended up traveling over a thousand miles from Kandua all the way to Calcutta. So he gets off the train and he's terrified. He has no idea where he is. It's crowded. It's overwhelming. There are trains everywhere going in every direction. The people around him don't appear to even speak the same language as him. He is stuck there and he doesn't know what to do. So he starts sleeping on the streets in Calcutta. And luckily, he's a smart kid. He already knows how to scavenge for scraps and loose change. So Saru scrapes by like this for weeks until he eventually meets this woman. We'll call her Hope. Hope runs a local orphanage and she helps get kids off the streets. So she takes him in, gives him a place to sleep at the orphanage, which is great, but she can't help him get back to where he's from because he doesn't know where he's from because he's five. She can't get him back to his family, so she does the next best thing. She finds him a new one. And by the time Saru is six, he's adopted by this nice Australian couple. Their names are Sue and John. Now, Sue and John fly him from Calcutta to come live with them in Tasmania, Australia. And to their credit, Sue and John seem to be really good parents. They show him love and support, they give him a good life, he really loves them. But he never forgets about his mother and his family back in that one room hut that he grew up in. And he doesn't know if he's ever gonna see her again. Until years go by since Saru was first brought to Australia. He's in his 20s now, but he still thinks about his birth mother. And then one day, a friend shows him Google Earth and how detailed all its maps are. And Saru thinks, oh, maybe this is how I can find my hometown and my mom. Now, this is a great idea for Saru, but there's a problem. India is huge, 1.4 billion people. So this is definitely a needle in the haystack situation, but Saru doesn't care. He becomes obsessed. So night after night, after work, he gets on Google Earth and he follows the railways all over India that lead to and from Calcutta. And he keeps looking and he keeps looking and about six years go by and he's still looking. But then, late one night, Saru finds this random little railway, and he decides to follow it for a while. And then suddenly, he starts seeing landmarks that he vaguely remembers. A water tower, a bridge that's near a dam, and he's like, crikey mate, or whatever the hell it is that Australians say. I think this is it. I think this is where I'm from. And there's only one way for him to be sure. He's got to travel there. So he hops on a plane and he flies all the way from Tasmania to Kandwa. And soon enough, he's in his hometown. And he ends up walking on a path he remembers walking a hundred times as a kid. And eventually that path leads him to the doorstep of his childhood home, that one room hut. But unfortunately, the hut is no longer there. Now it's just a pile of wreckage. It's been torn down. But then he happens to meet a local resident, a neighbor. And Saru explains his story and he shows neighbor his childhood photo. And neighbor looks at the photo and he's like, I can take you to your mother. And then he leads him around the corner, not too far away. And that is where finally, after 25 years, Saru finally sees his mother. They're reunited yeah! and they can't believe it and they're happy and they're overjoyed. And since then, Saru writes her regularly and he goes and visits her when he can. He ended up buying her a house so she no longer has to work. It's all very heartwarming stuff. The good ending. Shout out to India and Tasmania.